Degenerate gamblers, what's going on, everybody? Welcome to the undefeated post weighing show for UFC Vegas 90. Everybody, I hope you got your tinfoil hats on tight because this one was a doozy. How is everybody doing today? My guy Colby Saul in the chat. What's up? We've got Black DM3. We've got Sam, who knows the only undefeated show in MMA history. That is what is up. Mikey Jones, Joshua Frick, Paul in the house. Everybody smash that like button for me. MMA goat flying in here from the rafters. And oh, let me just, okay. Calvillo, Waitness, lock of the card. Let me tell you something. Let me tell you something. First and foremost, on this show, we recap everything. You come here so you don't have to watch the Wayans in the face-offs. I do that for you. I give you the info. But, guys, I am beyond pissed right now, okay? So let me set the timeline for you. Monday, I do a show. One of the best people in the industry comes on my channel and talks to me about these fights. One of the most respected people that I know in MMA, Cody Saftik. And you know what? I'm thinking... You know, I've been fading Cynthia Calvillo nonstop. I've been fading her nonstop. She's on a five-fight losing streak, and it's just been printing money for me. I think I'm going to do it one more time. I think I'm going to do it one more time. And Cody goes, Clint, pump the brakes. This is the one where we buy on Cynthia Calvillo. And while he's talking to me, I'm like, okay, okay, okay. I can, I, I can, I hear you. I kind of see it. I understand. I got you. And then as soon as the camera shuts off and I'm sitting in my own little space here, I'm going, no. No, we fade Cynthia Calvillo. We fade Cynthia Calvillo. I watched the fire in her eyes die as she sat on the stool against Andrea KGB Lee. I watched her drop close split decisions because she just didn't have that second gear anymore. And this morning, when I saw her lose to the scale, and let there be no inconscruities about this she lost to the scale this morning ladies and gentlemen she's on a five fight losing streak and she straight up got beat by the scale today she looked pale she looked awful i went that's it i was right i was right and i'm going back to it i'm gonna unload on pierre rodriguez in fact i bet the ko prop at plus 550 because the ground and pound from Pierre Rodriguez is vicious, okay? And if you're mentally losing to the scale on what is probably the last fight you'll ever have in the UFC, you're mentally already checked out and we've seen you quit in the octagon before, you'll do it again. You'll get put on your back and you'll do it again. And I was ready to steal the entire bag after everybody I know was betting on Cynthia Calvillo. We were going to buy the dip and the fight's off. I'm angry. I'm beyond pissed. That's money I'll never get back. So I am amped up for this show. I am ready to go. UFC Vegas 90 is a straight up dumpster fire of a card. It was before we got started. We lost a fight and we have three weight misses that are still somehow on the card to talk about. So let's get into it. Do me a favor and hit the like button. Subscribe here to the home of fight if you haven't already. Can you guys believe I'm still getting DMs? People asking where the show is. If you guys are listening, like if you're on audio or even just like watching and not paying attention to where the show is hosted, subscribe to the channel. You'll never miss another show ever again. I promise. All right. Nora Canoli takes on Melissa Mullins on this fight. And what what is happening here? Okay. Both women miss weight. This is a 135 pound fight. Canol comes in at 138 and a half. Mullins 138 on the dot. And guys, I'm they both. So here's the thing. Canole actually looked really good. She's sporting abs up there. She's jacked. She's very physical. Mullins, on the other hand, her mouth was hanging wide open. Like, she looked wiped. She looked absolutely exhausted. I'm convinced that these two were, like, sitting next to each other uh, in the sauna. <laughs> and they were just like, yeah, this sucks. You want to 
stop? They're like, yeah, let's stop. Like, I think, like, what are they going to do? Are they going to fine us both? Like, I feel like that's how the conversation went between these two in the showers uh, as they were trying to finish the weight cut because both of them missed and they just kind of shrugged it off. They're up there, like, smiling and talking to each other at the face-offs while you've, you've got the UFC in the background. They're just like, they're just not amused. <laughs> Man, this is... uh. This is such a tough fight for me. So I talked about this one on the total takedown, and I think I said over. But the more I think about it, I do kind of think there's opportunity for a finish from both sides of this fight here. Um, it's a tough one. I, I kind of lean violence just the way that they kind of match up here. Um, you've got Mullins, who is a solid grappling fighter, even though we feel like she's got some good striking. She showed that off in her last fight. She's got a grappling base. And we've seen that be a weakness for Nora. She's coming into the game late. And she's actually a Muay Thai striker by nature. She hits really hard. That's how she wins her fights by KO. Uh, with the weight cut issues, I'm not sure who that's going to favor and who that's going to hurt. So, yeah, I mean, maybe violence. The under two and a half is plus 180. This also could be an extremely boring hug fest where they're both just kind of out of gas and we get a, a like a heavyweight men's clinch style fight where it slides the full 15 minutes. Bad fight, folks. Bad fight. Low level. Don't like anybody. Not doing anything with this one. I will pick Mullins to go ahead and win the fight. Uh, maybe the Mullins by sub is okay, but mm -mm. Mm -mm. <laughs> hey, Cameron in the chat asking for the home of fight discord. I'm going to go ahead and plug that into the chat here for you guys. Um, there you go. If you want to come hang out with us, talk fights, there's a free and a paid version of it. If you want to join the paid version of it, where you get the picks uh, from the betting experts and Derek Brunson's picks and parlays and all that kind of shit. Um, $5 off your home of fight subscription. Use promo code diehard for that. But if you just want to come hang out and talk fights with people, use the freebie side of things. Uh, you'll be able to see my stuff in there. I post it all on free still on like uh Instagram and Twitter, obviously, but it's easier to follow if it's on my channel in the discord. So check that out what is going on mushroom mma sneaking a watch in at work my man love to hear it let's go okay so the next fight up on the card we got caesar almeida taking on dylan budka 185 and a half for both men here almeida was stone cold on the scales today everybody he looked fan freaking fantastic excellent condition excellent shape great frame dylan budka he gave a good solid flex no issues for him whatsoever but almeida is much much larger that's something i noticed here and again this is why we do this show right like size isn't everything in mma in fact a lot of times the smaller fighter ends up being far and away the better fighter of the two but size matters especially if you're talking about a close fight or a certain stylistic matchup Oh, the link is expired. They told me that was going to be a perma link. Son of a bitch. Okay, my bad, everybody. They told me that that was going to be a permanent link, and I wouldn't have to get a new link ever again with that one. So I will, I will get that for you, and I'll go ahead and update the link in the description below. Apologies. Circle back to this video, guys, uh, maybe a little bit later or something like that, and I should have a new link for you. So apologies. I'll get that figured out. That's my bad. Um, so at any rate, I like Cesar Almeida in this spot. I've been kind of leaning towards Cesar Almeida basically all week. He's following the Alex Pereira game plan here. They're rushing him along. They've got a young kid in Budka who, while he is young, he's got some upside. He's basically only a grappler. I think he's got room to grow, but at this point, he's essentially nothing. And we saw on Dana White's Contender Series that Almeida was able to sprawl and brawl his way through a guy that kind of had the same game plan. I expect this to be much of the same. And with the judges really favoring damage over control the way they have been recently, even if Almeida isn't getting that much off as far as damage or shots goes, whatever little bit he does get is probably going to score better than blanket control time from Budka because as of right now, Budka just doesn't do a whole lot with his control positions. He really is like wrestle wrestler, not as much ground and pound wrestler. So I lean dogger pass here in this spot. I've kind of leaned dogger pass in this spot all week. And I might actually pull the trigger here on Cesar Almeida. He's about plus 125 still at this point. You can get him out there at dog odds. And uh, I kind of like that. I feel like if they're bringing in this 36-year-old kickboxer here at like 4-0 or whatever, he, he's got a lifetime of combat experience just because he's 4-0 in MMA. Doesn't mean he's only got four fights. He's got a lot of kickboxing fights that kind of shore up that, you know, experience level and record. So... Yeah, I, I'll take the dog here in this spot. Probably going to add that as an official bet as well. Dan Arweta comes in here taking on uh, Jan Matsumoto, I believe is how they pronounce that. Dan, 136. Matsumoto, 136 on the dot. Dan Arweta did go ahead and need the box of shame. As you guys know, this guy is jacked out of his freaking mind. He is sucked out as all hell. 
and he almost flexed himself out on the scale. Like he was, he's doing that thing where, have you seen like those YouTube videos or TikToks where people like literally flex themselves unconscious because they'll cut the bloodstream off to their brain by flexing as hard as they possibly can. I thought he was going to kill over. I really did. Uh, Matsumoto though gave a good solid chest pound. This kid looks good. Very well balanced, good frame, good muscle mass. You can tell he's still got speed. He's got cardio. I, I do really like what I see out of Matsumoto. This was a really good stare down. Very intense. Dan, obviously bigger. Dan, obviously thicker. I like Matsumoto as a prospect. I like him. I think he can potentially win this fight. The problem I'm having is the price tag, guys. Like, You guys know how I feel about Peyton Talbot. Matsumoto has to show me he's a Peyton Talbot, but I think he is more Peyton Talbot than he is some of these other prospects that we're getting off Dana White's Contender Series. I think this kid is a real prospect. I think this kid is good, and he'll actually have some good fights in the UFC. He'll actually have some serious um, upside moving forward. But minus 165 against a guy who's got the UFC experience already that Adan Arweta has, a guy that's bigger than him, a guy that can more than likely out-wrestle him, um, I I get people taking the underdog shot on Dan. That's that's all I can say. I totally understand from a betting standpoint, it probably kind of has to be dog or pass. This would be a Dana White's contender series fade type of spot. But I'm looking at this kid, Matsumoto, and going, he's the one that'll buck the trend. He's the kind of kid that will win in this spot when eight out of 10 other prospects probably lose here. I like this kid. I'm picking Juan Matsumoto to go ahead and, or Gene, Jan, I, oh gosh, I got to go back and get that pronunciation. Sorry. I'm going to pick Matsumoto to go ahead and win this fight. I don't think I'm going to be betting him when I do like my $5, you know, sweep parlay for the entire card. He will be in that one, uh, but no real investment as far as a pick is concerned. I don't mind like the sub maybe at six to one, or like the the late round sub um, parlay prop sprinkles, so like sub two, sub three. You're not getting a great deal on those anymore. Unfortunately, it seems like the MMA community has kind of beat the hell out of these bookies with the super wide odds. They just don't give us good numbers anymore. Uh, but I think the sub is actually more likely than than the other results here for Matsumoto, except for maybe the knockout. Um, if Dan Arweta slows down, if he beats him up on the feet a little bit, I think Arweta's tough enough. He's a hard guy to actually put away, so maybe he catches him in a choke or something like that. And Matsumoto is a black belt, I believe, so kind Kind of like the late sub sprinkles if you're looking to go crazy uh, with anything on that one. And da Daz saying, I keep trying to get into your Discord and it won't let me in because I'm Australian. <laughs> oh, sorry, Daz. Um, you know, like they said, the like you said earlier, the link's expired. I'm sorry. I'll get you a new one. I promise. Colby agreeing with me here on the damage over control. Dixon popping in to remind us three only fan fades on this board today. Thank you for notifying the people, Dixon. The hottest angle in MMA betting today is the only fans fade. All right, everybody. Next up, we got Pedro Falco coming in here on short notice, taking on Victor Hugo. 136 for Pedro, 135 and a half for Hugo. And uh, Pedro looked good. I'll be honest with you. Amped up. Great mustache on this guy. Real impressed by the facial hair. Victor Hugo, he's got a solid stash game response. I'll, I'll give him credit where it's due. He was very relaxed on the scales today. Uh, Hugo does have a decent size advantage. This was a good face off. I kind of like what I see from Pedro, if I'm being honest with you. Uh, but the one thing I noticed, I did actually get to go back and do some tape on this one. A lot of times with these short notice fill-ins, I don't always do as much research as I would like to. I still need to do some more, obviously. Uh, but what I noticed from Pedro is he dives headfirst into his takedowns. He is, uh, from what I understand, a really solid grappler. So he is desperate to get the fight to the floor. I expect Hugo to have a striking advantage, but we all know that Hugo has a nasty submission game on him as well. So I think this is going to be a violent fight. The under two and a half at minus 135 doesn't sound half bad to me here for this one because I could see Pedro maybe um, taking advantage of a position where he's dominant on Victor Hugo um, or Hugo just doing kind of what he does in finishing. And if he doesn't finish, blowing his wad, leaving himself vulnerable, that's kind of the fade for Victor Hugo. I'm going to get him with that at one of these occasions. I just don't think Pedro's the guy. Um, so I'm looking at Victor Hugo as potentially being the side here. And I wouldn't be surprised at all if he finishes this guy. From what I understand, Pedro has a little bit of a gas tank issue, and I don't know that the short notice replacement here is going to help him in that, especially with the pace a guy like Victor Hugo tends to put on. Um, Victor Hugo also just uh, extremely confident today. You can feel that confidence like radiating off of him. And again, I know that's not like high level technical analysis and shit like that. Uh, but when these two guys kind of size up, it's like one guy thinks and the other guy knows. 
Hugo seems to know. You know what I mean? He he doesn't seem to think this guy really has anything for him. So um, I'll trust him here. He's about a minus 145 favorite right now. I think that's fair. Um, if you like Victor Hugo, much better opponent for him than the previously booked one. I was going to bet against him. Uh, Jermaine Durandamy up next. She takes on Norma Dumont. We've got 135 for GDR, 136 for Big Norm. Um, Durandamy looked good. Jermaine looked fantastic. No issues at all. All smiles on the scales today, and she's big, by the way. Um, Norma Dumont, I'll give it to you guys, looked absolutely amazing. Norma Dumont Nation, stand up. The caboose was chugging up there today. She has finally made 135 pounds, 136, close enough. Uh, but she's never made this weight class before. She's always missed. And now she finally did it, and she looked fantastic doing it. She's got abs for days, folks, like dialed in. She is well built for this one. GDR still has a massive size advantage here in this spot. I mean, my God, this chick used to fight at 145, didn't look out of place at all, made 135 like a freaking pro, and is still towering over her opposition. Good face off. It looked to me like Norma Dumont almost had a little bit of like starstruck about her. She was like getting all giggly and huggy when Jermaine Durandamy was like, you know, looking at her and smiling and stuff. And GDR, she's always like that. She's very respectful of her opponents. She's not like a I'm gonna kill you type of person. She uh, she's a police officer, and this is just kind of fun for her, right? She's just one of the kickbox best kickboxers in the world, one of the best MMA fighters on the planet. So she does it for S's and G's. <laughs> um, I, I think GDR is going to knock out Norma Dumont, guys. I've got a bet on GDR. We got in much earlier in the week, better plus money. She's only plus 105 right now. This number is very, very rapidly trending down. I'm a little bit worried that Norma Dumont came in looking the best she ever has. But I don't think dropping the weight class is going to help her durability. She's been hurt before. She's been finished before. She's been knocked out early before. And even if her cardio is a little bit better, it's not going to help her fight IQ any. We've seen her put herself in really bad positions, make suboptimal decisions, do the wrong thing every chance that she gets. And when she does stuff like that, when she fights higher caliber fighters, they make her pay. And now she finally is fighting somebody who's not a scrub. She's fighting a world-class opponent. And I think that matters. Um, GDR by knockout is plus 400. I like that. She could snatch a sub on her. That's always possible. Jermaine Durandamy, ever evolving as a fighter. You know, she locked up a sub against, uh, you know, one of the champions of the division the last time we saw her. So it, it's not a far cry to think that maybe she could sub Norma Dumont as well. Now, if Norma is just like reborn at 135 and she takes her down and GDR uh, coming off the long layoff and having a baby looks like she's super rusty and, and loses a decision or some shit, is that going to shock me? Uh, no, no, it won't shock me. There's a lot of outside the cage factors that are like, well, GDR might not be the best bet. But at the end of the day, guys, you, you got to go with class, right? Like GDR is a world class fighter. She held the belt. And it's funny because we keep talking about like, women's MMA catching up to the cream of the crop and, and, you know, Ronda Rousey, like spurring on a whole new young generation. It's just not there yet. Like we still have not had women's MMA catching up. So the elites are still the elites like Holly Holm at 46 years old is still beating the brakes off of young contenders. Raquel Pennington just took the fucking belt. Like GDR can come back in here, walk in and head kick somebody absolutely on the table. These women are too good and they're not being caught up to. At least not yet. Uh, we've got next up Court McGee taking on Alex Morono. 170 and a half for McGee. 171 for Alex Morono. And I'll be honest with you, Court McGee looked really good. Still great shape for a guy that's 40 years old now. Gave a big flex. Looks solid. Classic Morono. He's a soft body type, so we're never really going to talk about his abs popping or anything like that. It's been that way his whole career. He looked good. Um, these guys size up really, really well. I thought Court McGee was going to have a size advantage. I really thought Court was going to be the bigger, more physically strong guy in this spot. And just, you know, I expected him to have a size and height advantage, right? Like, I just, I don't know. In my head, when I picture these two guys, that's what I expected. It's not there. Um, so I, I kind of made a couple arguments for how maybe Court McGee can pin Morono up against the fence. And, you know, he's not the crusher. He's the grinder. Like, that's what Court McGee does. I, I don't see it. I, I've kind of let that go, right? Like, I wasn't going to really bet it in the first place. Um... I just thought he was maybe a little more live than the numbers suggested, but no. Alex Morono arguably is fighting the best he ever has in his entire career. Even with that like third round TKO loss, he was winning that fight right up until he got binked. He's not taking on a guy that's got any type of knockout power. He's going to have the volume and the speed advantage. He's fighting the best of his life. He's going to be probably the more durable of the two at this stage. So yeah, we got to go Alex Morono. Um, 
parlay piece maybe I, I don't know i'm not super comfortable with it i think i'm just gonna probably sit back and watch but he really should win this fight uh my guy dixon cider shouting out my girl veronica macedo has a fight cheers dixon indeed she does against jj aldrich no less and and i think jj is always a little bit um underrated i think i hope that's the opposite here because everyone seems to hate on my girl veronica macedo um she is the christian rodriguez of the women's mma division so i hope i keep getting good numbers on her because we're just gonna keep betting her baby she's gonna keep on cashing tickets for us i hope everyone is still as enamored with jj as they used to be she's on a bit of a skid so you know maybe the number won't be quite as good as it should be but it doesn't matter i'm gonna load up on veronica macedo much like my girl uh liz gorilla who cashed one leg of our parlay for us in uh pfl the other night you guys got to stop doubt and doubt and liz what is this shit she prints money she's an easy money machine every time like just it's always liz it was always liz all right Charlie Campbell takes on Trevor Peak. 155 for Campbell, 155 and a half for Peak. And I'll be honest with you, Campbell looked really good up there today. Well built, looks solid, solid flex. Trevor Peak, intense as ever. Liam picks fights as angry as possible on the scale today. Gave a very good flex, said it was the best weight cut of his life. And you could, you could kind of tell. He looked absolutely fantastic. But there's a huge size difference here. This is another one where I'm a little bit surprised. Um, we knew Trevor Peak was going to be slightly on the smaller side, right? But we didn't know how much smaller he was going to be. And that's really kind of my big issue here on this one. I've already bet Trevor Peak. We got a one-unit shot on my guy. That number's been coming down just ever so slightly. Um, I'm not going to back out of it or anything like that. It's kind of predicated on the fact that Charlie Campbell crashes face first into anything uh, anything coming back his direction, right? This guy never saw a punch he didn't want to run face first into. And I'm kind of counting on that uh, being the same situation here against Pete because you do not want to get Tomahawk to the face. You just don't. Um, but that's, that's kind of what I'm seeing here in this spot. It, it makes me a little bit nervous because I, I did think Pete was going to be a little bit closer to this guy in size. Um, I still count the durability of peak. I'm still hoping for the upside of peak, but we know he's outgunned. We know he's undersized now and his opponent has a technical advantage. So it really all comes down to that chin. I wouldn't suggest anybody going like uber hard on Trevor peak in this spot at this point. Um, Fingers crossed he gets it done for us. I'm rooting for Trevor Peak. We all want another Trevor Peak knockout at this point. Uh, but this is uh, this is a tough spot, you know, realistically with that size difference. If if Charlie Campbell plays this a little bit smarter than he has previously, like Peak could just have a hard time getting to him. I hope Campbell does what he always does, and that's just crashing forward into the pocket. But if for whatever reason he decides to slow down and not do that, we could be uh, up shit creek here. So we'll see. Small bet, one unit. Um, got it earlier in the week and uh, peak by KO. Very much hopefully. Nick in the chat saying, awesome, favorite MMA show. Thank you, Clint. Thank you, Nick. Appreciate you being here. You are awesome, my guy. All right. Next up, we got Lucas Breschke taking on Walter Walker. Lucas Breschke came in 236 and Walker 260. Four. You did not hear that incorrectly. There's a 30-pound weight difference between these two men. Lucas Breschke. He's all soft potatoes again, guys. Um, I talked earlier in the week about how you saw it as gone and that could make a difference. And he's showing off pictures on his Instagram where his abs are popping. It's lighting. It was all lighting. He gets up there on the scale today and he looks like a deflated bag of milk again. Like this guy, he's not taking the good stuff. He's not on the good stuff. And they're giving him Volter walker i made an argument where i was like man for betting wise this has got to be dog or pass right like there's no way we're trusting uh the b-side walker to come in here and pay off a minus 600 price tag everyone and their mother is betting this underdog because the line was insanely wide i almost feel like that was a trap at this point um i've decided that if i'm ever betting bresky it's going to be live because volter is going to take this guy down he's got a 30 pound weight advantage so if bresky can get up and if Walter looks tired in round two, then I will live bet Breschke. But we're all the way down to minus 230. You've got Breschke plus 190. Like, everybody seems to have the exact same thought on this one. And the bookies are just, like, chipping this number down as they go. But we're still at a two-to-one favorite mark for Walker. And Walker's skills aren't really there, guys. Like, he's not that good. But he's a big old boy. This guy will get on top of you, and he will just smash. And that's the kind of thing that... I don't know if Breschke's got an answer for that. Now, on the feet, is Breschke the better striker? No. But is he the more active striker? Yes. He will throw more volume out there. And I think that could potentially be a problem. But it's not like he's a big KO threat either. Like, we would need Volker to gas completely. 
we would need Walter to be completely exhausted for Lucas Breschke to come back and like TKO him in the third round or something like that. I think it's far more likely that Walter does the freak of nature thing and just gets on top of him, sits on his chest, and maybe we see Breschke throw in the towel at some point because he can't get 30 extra. And you know what? That was cutting weight, right? So maybe it's like 40 extra pounds off of him. Um, we've got a small heavyweight taking on a big heavyweight, an undefeated guy who's got a brother in the UFC versus a guy who has yet to get his hand raised in the UFC. And at plus 280, I get it. Take the stab on Lucas. I was kind of uh, in that that ballpark myself. But now that we're down to the minus 230 range, uh, it's favored or pass instead of being dog or pass, right? Live bet opportunity. Watch this one closely. We'll see if Walter can keep up any kind of a pace. We'll see if he can keep up any kind of takedowns. If Walter is slowing down and gassing out and exhausted, then we jump in live on Breschke. That's the plan. But the pick as of right now has got to be Walter. Um, and, and you've got Breschke who's been KO'd twice. So like, Bolter KO, it's kind of gross. You're getting like plus 120, but at the same time, I think it makes sense. Anyway, next up, we've got Morgan Charrier takes on Chepe Mariscal. We've got Charrier 145 on the dot, ladies and gentlemen. 145 and a half for Chepe. And Morgan is dialed the fuck in. You should have seen this man on the scales up there. He looked absolutely fantastic. Chiseled Greek god bod and he's got the hair he's got it dyed up he's looking good on the scales ladies and gentlemen chepe on the other hand broke the cardinal rule he's rocking the sunglasses which no no no. we we know something's going on when they're wearing the sunglasses on the scales right unless your name's charles Oliveira, you get no pass here and on top of that chepe was extremely slow to the scale today i mean we're talking snail crawl pace now he got up there and he did he, he definitely, you know, showed out a little bit. He's in good shape, but the off and the on the scale, guys, if you walk in, you know, watch him leading up to the scale and then watch him leading off the scale, like he's walking slow. He's really dragging his feet. He looked very meh today to me outside of the moment when they needed to snap a picture and he needed to make a face real quick. This was a really intense face off. Chepe was trying to talk to Morgan. Morgan wasn't having it. Good stare down, big size advantage for Morgan. That's another thing in this one. Uh, Morgan looked very, very much the bigger man here in this fight. Now I've been reverse CLV would in this spot guys. And honestly, I'm dimp I'm tempted to drop the FU bomb on this one, right? Like the market disagrees with me and I don't care. So I got Morgan at minus 148 earlier in the week, and it looked like this line was going to flip. Chepe got down to minus 105 at some point, um, and now it's kind of tugged back the other direction. And to me, to me, now again, I tip my cap, my tinfoil cap, to my friend Liam Picks Fights as being the best market reader I know. And so I'm not the guy, right? But anytime I see something like this, when the market dips super low and it's almost going to flip, you're going to get plus money on Morgan. No, 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 no. Morgan's still the favorite. Morgan's the side. Like that, they're saying, no, we will not give you plus money. Somebody came in and said, pick them. Oh, give me pick them. And that sent it straight back the other direction. So I, I think we're on the right side here. I, I think Morgan is the side. And in fact, I'm calling it. I think he's going to knock out Chepe. Now, I know Chepe has only been knocked out by like two or three guys. Some of those could have been arguably early stoppages. But this sets up so perfectly. Like you've got Morgan who's all footwork and counter striking and speed and big one hitter type shots. And you've got a guy who's going to come forward, get in your face and try to volume you up. And sometimes the volume striker, that, that means good for them because they'll out you on the numbers, right? But in other cases like this one, that opens up those opportunities to counter. So if you're going to come strike with Morgan, you're going to get in his range. You're going to give him the opportunity to hit you with a big shot. And if this guy wants to hit you with a big shot, it's going to hurt. So it's not a situation uh, where the power is going to be matched, where Chepe is going to want to go one for one with this kid. And when they trade one for one, I think it's going to be pretty obvious where the power lies. And that's going to be on the Morgan side. So whether this thing goes late and Chepe's durability holds up, uh, Morgan by decision doesn't seem too crazy for me, but I could absolutely see Morgan landing a bomb. I like the Morgan side. We're on the Morgan side. Do I want to double down and just throw up the double birds to everybody with Chepe tickets in their pockets? Probably not, because Chepe's got me 2-0 already. <laughs> but that's that's what I'm tempted to do. That's what I'm tempted to do in this spot. I think I think Morgan's the goods. Next up, co-main event time. Alexander Hernandez takes on Damon Jackson. Hernandez came in at 150. 
folks. This is a 145 pound fight. He missed weight by four freaking pounds. He looked very non energetic. His face was very much like, well, I fucked up. Like, he knows. He knows. Now, apparently, he did continue to cut weight. That was, I believe, part of the, uh, the reason we still have this fight is that he was required to continue cutting weight. He came back, weighed in again, and I guess he got 147 and a half. So still didn't quite make it, but it was enough to keep it where he got like a 20% fine. And Damon Jackson's team will still go ahead and take the fight. Damon Jackson came in at 146 and folks, he looked like death up there. Like I, Damon Jackson's one of those guys. We talk about it every time. The older he gets, the tougher this is going to be. He's got a big frame for the weight class. And these weight cuts are hard on that man. I mean, it's crazy because it's like shriveling his spine. He has way in scoliosis. Like he gets up there and he's always like this, like he's always like cocked off to the side, can't stand up straight. And it's only for the freaking weigh ins when that happens. It, it's like, he loses the fluid in his spine and it just kind of keels over when he's up there on the scales today. I worry about Damon Jackson. I worry about him a lot. Alexander Hernandez did not look like he was diminished or hurt and he missed weight by so much. It's one of those spots where I think the weight miss probably favors, um, probably favors him for having the extra size and such. Now I need to look up like a picture of him and that's what I'm trying to do here. I'm going to see what he looks like. Um, when he goes back for like the second attempt real quick, I'm, I'm pulling up a video from MMA junkie. Um, he does look a decent bit more like worn out on the scales for this second weigh in attempt. Um, and they do use the box of shame on him here for that. His face is a little bit sucked out, but his eyes are wide and he's moving around. So he's okay. You know, Alexander Hernandez is okay. The issue for me is that we know he's a gas bag, right? Alexander Hernandez already is a bit of a gas bag. And that doesn't bode well for a guy struggling to cut weight, right? But the way Damon Jackson moves, um, guys, you, you've seen his last couple of fights. He just eats overhands. Like he's so slow. He is so counterable. I think Alexander Hernandez is going to knock knock him out. I I, I know that's kind of his only path to victory, right? Is KO or bust at this point because he struggles to go deeper in the fights. Uh, but it does seem like he's getting a grip on lasting 15 minutes. He did so against Jim Miller and it turned out okay. He'll have the wrestling advantage here. So unless he is really exhausted and loses in like a scramble or something like that and gets his back taken. I think he'll find his way to top position. I hate the money line. Absolutely hate the money line. He is minus, he was 205. He's still 205. He's minus 205. Um, and I think he's the right side. I think Alexander Hernandez probably wins this fight more often than not, but especially with that weight miss and especially with the extra cut, I wouldn't really trust him at that number. Again, he'll be in the parlay when I link everything up together here. He's not going to be in like a big investment two-legger parlay or anything like that worth anything. Um, I don't mind the KO prop. Like I mentioned, I, I think round one, round two KOs uh, for Alexander Hernandez really does make some sense here in this spot, just being the younger guy that hits harder, taking on a slower, older veteran whose chin seems to be deteriorating ever so slightly, um, still picking Alexander Hernandez, even with the weight debacle. And I know that's weird because that's not me. I'm, I'm usually the guy that gets up here and plants the flag and they missed weight. They looked awful. We're going to bet against them. I, I just kind of think Damon's kind of had it at this point. Uh, main event, everybody. Hey, we got 72 live viewers in here. Do me a favor and hit the like button if you haven't already, please. And uh, subscribe to Home of Fight so you can catch the content moving forward from here on out. Brendan Allen made 186 pounds. Chris Curtis, 186 pounds as well. Matching weights here. Big difference, though, was the attitudes today. Brendan Allen... Face looked a little sucked out. I mean, no real issues. He was he was fine, professional, good, but looked like he had a bit of a rough cut. Whereas Chris Curtis was like dancing and moonwalking his way to the scale. Dude looks absolutely fantastic, by the way. Now, I know he's kind of a natural 170 or he's fighting up at 185, but they talked about how the plan for him for his next fight was to put on more weight, to put on more muscle, and then he'd be more at home at 185 pounds. And it looked like that process has started because my man, Chris Curtis, is jacked. His arms are absolutely massive he looks huge height advantage obviously goes to Allen. he's a very big guy for the weight class Allen was very serious chris curtis not so much chris curtis was up there having fun you know putting his putting his dukes up at him for the face off it was it was a good time um the problem i have with this fight everybody is uh is you guys you fuckers <laughs> i'm supposed to be the hot take guy 
I'm supposed to be the ride or die with Chris Curtis guy. That's my boy. I've been ride or die with Chris Curtis since he got to the UFC and we've been printing money with him as an underdog. You all hate him. You all don't want to bet on him. But suddenly this week, everybody agrees with me that Chris Curtis is just going to do the same thing he did last time and knock out Brendan Allen. What the fuck you guys are mushing me i'm supposed to be on the hot take here y'all are supposed to believe that brendan allen has made a bunch of improvements and he's going to come in here better and he's going to show chris curtis what should have ah no i'm supposed to be the one saying that chris curtis is going to do the same exact damn thing as last time what's the matter with you now we've all mushed the stupid thing and we're all going to lose. The reason I hate this so much is Chris Curtis was plus 170 everywhere and DraftKings goes, oh, everybody's betting Chris Curtis. Sweet, plus 180. Here you go. Here's a little more plus money. They want the plus money, you jerks. Uh, so we're going to have to overcome the bookies on this one, guys. We're going to have to overcome the bookies on this one because the bookies all think Brendan Allen is the side here and we have all collectively mushed this number it, there's a lot of love for Chris Curtis in the market I don't think Brendan Allen has made that big of an improvement when it comes to his striking now you look at what he's done very recently and he's on one hell of a tear let me tell you guys I can't take a dang thing away from him on the run that he is currently on but Chris but Brendan Allen striking is not really what's doing the dance for him right he out wrestled Christoph Jocko. Big whoop. The guy's in PFL now. He out grappled Andre Muniz. That's impressive as shit. But Brennan Allen is a MMA grappler with better wrestling and cardio than Muniz. So expected outcome. Maybe not for a lot of people, but I think I bet on Brennan Allen for that one. Bruno Silva. We know that guy's shot to bits now. And this guy took him out and tapped him, uh, took him down, tapped him out. Big shock. That's how he loses every fight when he's not getting eye poked by Chris Wyman. Paul Craig. That one is also very impressive. But again, Paul Craig has no chin. So if he wants to hurt this guy on the feet, he can. And then when they grapple, again, wrestler on top. Better MMA grappler. None of these guys fight anything anywhere near the way Chris Curtis does. So unless Brendan Allen can suddenly become a completely different man striking in the small cage, no less, and he can strike the way Nasser Dinamovov or Jack Hermanson does and skate the outside and constantly keep Chris Curtis at bay and use footwork and movement and cut angles, they're going to have to fight. And he is a pressure fighter, a forward pressure fighter, a grappler, a finisher, and he's going to try to do those things. So Chris Curtis is going to stand on that takedown defense rating. He's going to hurt this guy to the body. It's going to take longer because I do think that Brendan Allen is going to try to follow the pre-existing blueprint for beating Chris Curtis. So I think it's just going to come a little bit later, guys. I think it's Chris Curtis by KO, but I think it's round four or five this time. Instead of being the round two you know, car crash that it was the first time, I think it's going to take him some time. But Brendan Allen is a guy who I question the 25-minute cardio. I really do. And I absolutely question the chin. I absolutely question the durability. 25 minutes locked in the cage with Chris Curtis rib roasters. <laughs> Fuck off. Get out of here. You're not surviving that. I'm still on Chris Curtis. He is our dog of the week. It's a two-unit bet. We got plus 170. I wish I had got this plus 180 that's hanging out there now. And I'd be a hell of a lot more comfortable if all of you guys weren't also betting Chris Curtis. Okay? But, uh... Say la vie. We're all just going to crush the boogies together this week. That's all it's going to be. That is the undefeated post way in show, folks. Everybody make sure you grab your tinfoil hats out there. I hope your bets go well this weekend. I hope you make absolute piles of money. I am not going to be live immediately when these fights start here. Guys, I've got a funeral, unfortunately, um, to attend. It's been a rough couple of months uh, over here at this household. So I just want to tell you guys... Um, you know, if there's somebody that you haven't thought about for a while, but you were always close, you were always tight, not the toxic person that you don't need in your life, but a friend. Just reach out. Just say what's up. Check on them. Make sure they're doing all right. Keep that path of communication open. Sometimes you never know when it's going to be your last chance. All right? Let's crush these tickets, everybody. I hope the show helps you. Leave me a like button on your way out. And remember, this is the only undefeated MMA show on the planet. Let's fucking go. Let's roll.